so we're going to show you three things mainly. First, how to use the new NEMO tool, how to use the new time slicing capabilities in Leap, which are much more flexible than before and much easier to use as well, and how to do NG storage modeling. Um, so in the past, you've been able to use Leap to model overall energy demand and supply, but it was always difficult to, do, to get a really sort of detailed or nuanced picture of how that supply varied within the year <clears throat> to look at sort of seasonal and da daily variations in demand and supply. And, and those issues are really important and they're gonna be increasingly important in the future as we start trying to transition to much lower emission development pathways. We're gonna need to find ways of integrating uh, much larger amounts of variable renewable power into our grids. And how are we gonna do that while uh, balancing the, um, the, the seasonal and daily variations in demand. Well, that's probably going to require much more flexible operation of grids and it's going to require energy storage as well. And it's probably going to require energy efficiency uh, on the demand side to make space for sort of growing electrification, which is likely to be a very key strategy for uh, low emission pathways. So for example, if we're gonna electrify our transport fleet, we can have to make space for that by doing efficiency in all of the other sectors. Um, so I'm gonna give you a little sort of a uh, demonstration of those kinds of things, how you might uh, model them in LEAP. I'm going to show you um, a fictitious data set that com covers some of those topics. Uh, so bear in mind that what I show you here is not a real country. These are not real numbers, but a lot of the input data I've used in this ficti fictitious data set is pretty realistic. So I think it's quite interesting. So let's start by looking at some of the data inputs. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do that's maybe different from what you've done when you've used Leap in the past is I'm gonna set up my demand analysis in a slightly different way. So the first thing I'm gonna do is visit the settings screen in Leap. Um, you won't have seen this screen before. In fact, you will have seen this screen before, but it previously was called the basic parameters screen. So we've renamed it the settings screen, which is a bit more standard. And I'm gonna set up this analysis to do a to, to do the calculations in a di different way. Instead of specifying, specifying my uh, load shape uh, for the system as a whole, which is what most people typically do in Leap, here I'm gonna actually specify the load shape so that each individual demand device. So I'm gonna specify how the, what lighting looks like, what air conditioning looks like, what refrigerators look like, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna specify those individually, and then Leap is gonna build up the overall system load shape. And that will be important as we look at policies. So if our peak is caused by air conditioning, for example, then we can focus on air conditioning as a really important area to do energy efficiency so that we can flatten the, the peak load and flatten the load shape. And that will really help with um, making sure we can meet our loads in the future. Okay, so that's the first thing I've set up there is load shapes for each demand device. So let's come down now into, um, to see how we can actually set up um, the time slices that, that specify the variations within the year. So this is a screen that's been thoroughly redesigned in Leap 2020. Let's go to this time slices screen here under the general time slices screen. Uh, and here you can see I've got a list of time slices. So this is how I've divided my year up. So here I've divided it up into seasons and then within each season I've divided it up into 24 hours. Um, you weren't able to do that in previous versions of Leap. The previous version of Leap couldn't look at um, hourly variations in the bound, but the new one's much more flexible and it's really easy to have different configurations of that. So for example, here under the setup screen, I can set up what kind of um, time slicing I want. There's a really easy to use button here where you can pick whether you want to do seasons, whether you want to do months, whether you want to do weeks. Within that, you can do um, every day of the week, you can do weekdays versus weekends. And then within a particular day, you can divide it up into two, four or 24 hourly groups. And just selecting one of those will be enough to um, uh, uh, re reconfigure all your time slices in Leap. So I'm not gonna do that now, but it's very easy to do that. You can even configure things in even more detail for example, if you're in the Middle East, the weekend is a different day than it is here in the US. So you can even configure, 
for example, what's the definition of a weekend? Here we have Saturdays and Sundays, but you could configure it to be Fridays and Saturdays, which is, which is um, how things are done in the Middle East more commonly. Um, okay, so that's the new time slicing screen. It's much easier to use and it's much more flexible and much more detailed than before. Okay, so once we've done the setup screen, let's go back and look at how we're specifying our annual energy demands. So here's the demand tree in LEAP, and here we've got a household sector. Here you can see I've divided households down into different end uses. And here you can see for each end use, you'll probably be familiar with this variable where we specify the overall annual energy intensity. But now we have this new variable called load shape, where we can specify how the shape varies within the year. So here there's an equation saying, this is the uh, yearly shape for air conditioning. So let me show you what that's drawing upon is sort of a library of different load shapes, which are specified down here under the, under the yearly shape screen. So let me show you that screen quickly. So, oops, sorry, that's a little bit big. So the yearly shape screen is a place where you can build up load shapes for different demand devices. So here, for example, you've got air conditioning. Let me show that so you can see the variation by the seasons. So here you can see air conditioning, the peak's obviously gonna be in the US. It's going to be in the summer months during the sort of the middle of the day. Heating is going to be more important in the winter. There's the yellow curve here, much less important in the summer. Lighting, you, as you'd expect, happens in the early hours of the day and in the evening. So, whereas refrigerators are a much more sort of flat to load shape, there's not that much variation. So you can specify these different load shapes for different devices and then Leap will stack them all up to give you the overall system load shape. And it's really easy, even though there's many, many pieces of data here, it's really easy to import them because you can tend to find hourly load shapes for all 8,760 hours. Those things tend to be available on the internet and you can use the import feature in, in Leap here uh, in order to quickly bring them in. I won't do that now because I don't want to make changes to this data set, but you know, in just a few seconds, you can import and create these different load shapes. So once you've created those load shapes, you can come back down here under your different demand analyses and allocate those load shapes to the appropriate technologies in LEAP. So here I've used the air conditioning load shape for the air conditioning technologies, the heating load shape for heating technologies, et cetera, et cetera. So the lighting technologies like that. Okay. So that's on the demand side. So what we want to do on the supply side is work out how we're going to meet those varying demands over time. So Let's have a look at our transformation sector now. So down here, I'm gonna close the demand branch, come down here under the transformation branch. And here what we've got is a list of different processes that might be available for meeting those demands. And one thing you can see that's different here compared to the old version of Leap is we have this little battery icon. So what we can do now is specify energy storage. Um, so um, that was not available in previous version of, um, of Leap, Leap 2018, but energy storage is going to be there available. It can be charged up when you've got plenty of energy or it can be discharged to help meet the demands in other time slices when you haven't got enough energy. So it can help sort of flatten the overall load shape. Um, so that's a brand new feature in Leap. Um, now, the other thing I want to show you is how you connect Leap up to Nemo. It's really easy to do. Once you've installed uh, Nemo, Leap will automatically see it. You don't have to do anything to manually connect them. Uh, and you can check to see if your, if your version of Leap is connected to Nemo. If I go to the About screen, you can see down here, yes, it's found Nemo. So Nemo is correctly installed. And in order to use Nemo, it's again, very, very, very easy to do. If I just come to the, the module branch, electric generation, if I come to uh, one of the scenarios, there's this variable called optimize. So in this case, when you're doing your normal modeling in Leap, uh, your normal simulation modeling, that variable, that variable would just be set to no, just the words no. But in this case, we set it to tell, uh, to tell Leap to use Nemo and to use the CPLEX solver. So 
as Jason mentioned, Nemo supports all sorts of different solvers. It supports free solvers, which are free, which is great, but they tend to be rather slow. But it also uh, supports what I call these sort of industrial strength solvers. So in particular, at the moment, it supports CPLEX and Groby, which are expensive, but very fast solvers. And we're going to try and make sure that uh, Nemo, Leap, Nemo and Leap support as many solvers as we possibly can. You have to buy the solvers separately, unfortunately. They're not part of Leap but at least you have the flexibility to be able to select them. And setting them up is really easy. You know, you just click on this orange button over the right, and here you can select, you know, no to do simulation. Yes, just to use um, the default uh, framework and solver. And then here, here are the different solvers you have available. So we do still support the older solver um, that we've used for many years, Osmosis, but we're generally transitioning now to make greater use of Nemo. So in this particular model, I've set up Nemo to use CPLEX. And I will say that if you want to do storage modeling, you do have to use Nemo. We don't support that under CPLEX. Okay, so let's, I'll try and show you some results in, the, in a second, but you can see here I've set this up um, uh, on the supply side to have a range of different technologies. Uh, there's nuclear technologies, there's natural gas, there's wind, there's solar, and there's energy storage. And I'm going to let Nemo decide which of those technologies to build and how it wants to operate those different technologies. So before I show you some results, let me just quickly show you what scenarios I've set up here. So here we have a baseline scenario. So the baseline scenario is sort of a projection of growth into the future, but it has very few policies. So it doesn't have much energy efficiency. It's not trying to switch away from gasoline transport to electric vehicles. It's not doing very much energy efficiency at all on the demand side. Um, and then, but it's still, it's using Nemo on the supply side to work out um, what kind of electric generation uh, mix it should have. The policies scenario, um, explores really quite sort of rapid introduction of uh, energy efficiency and electrification. So on the one hand, we're trying to do as much energy efficiency as we can. We're switching to efficient lighting, efficient air conditioning. Um, um, there's efficiency going on in the industrial and services sector. And then in, on the transport sector, we're very rapidly switching from gasoline vehicles to electric vehicles. So. In both of those scenarios, I'm using, ne using Nemo, but I've, I've blocked Nemo from doing any energy storage in those first two scenarios. So I just want to show what it would look like if you don't do energy storage. And then in this scenario, it's exactly the same as the policy scenario, but I've just switched on the ability for Nemo to do um, storage. And that's really easy to do. Um, it's just there's one variable where you set the maximum capacity that you're allowed to build. In these, store, in these scenarios, I set it to zero for storage. And in this one, I just allow it to do as much as it likes. And then I finally, I've got one other scenario where I'm setting additional emission constraints. So I just want to see how Nemo will behave if I tell it it has to achieve much lower greenhouse gas emissions. So let's look at some of the results. I think I might need to open up this other one that I've already um, pre-calculated because I think I was making some changes there. Okay, so let's try and look at some results. So the first one I want to show you is, is the overall electricity demand. So here's the electricity demand in the baseline scenario. So you can see it's, um, it's just gradually growing over time. It's not doing much efficiency. Um, um, and all of the sectors are growing. You know, it's, it's, like, it's sort of like a, um, a rapidly developing middle income country, something like that. Let's look at the policy scenario though, which is a bit different. So the policy scenario, you can see, first of all, uh, the, the growth in the household sector is much lower than it was in the baseline scenario. That's because I've done a lot of energy efficiency investments. I'm doing all sorts of um, um, much more efficient air conditioners, more efficient lighting, things like that. So that brings down the demand. But on the other hand, I've said, let's switch from gasoline to electric vehicles. So let's look at what would be implied by having lots more electric vehicles. That causes a big growth in electricity. Okay, so that's the total annual demand over time, but what does that look like within each year? So let's look at a different chart now that looks at the time slices. Um, so that's this one here. I can see I'm running out of time rapidly. 
So here you can see, for example, for the different sectors, how the demand varies within time. So you can see here, for example, there's big peaks in the summer uh, in the household sector. If I zoom in on the household sector by kicking up here, you can see a lot of that's caused by this air conditioning. So really big peaks in the baseline due to the air conditioning. But if we do a policy scenario, it's much less, right? It's because we've invested in efficient air conditioning. So we've brought down the peak, the overall load shape. It's still very peaky, but it's much less peaky than it was before. Or if we look for the sector as a whole though, here's our household sector, but now we've got this big growth in the orange one, which is the, which is the, um, the transport sector. So that's sort of the electric vehicles growing over time. Okay, so, how are we going to meet that demand over time? Well, so let's look at a different variable here. Let's look at the power generation over time. So here's our baseline again. So the power generation over time, you can see um, Nemo has chosen different plants and it uses different plants in different time slices in order to uh, identify the sort of minimum cost of, of providing the electricity. So you can see here it's using solar during the day when solar is available. So in LEAP, you can set the availability of your power plants to, to be uh, different in different seasons and different times of day. So the solar is available during the day. The wind varies as well, but more by season rather than by, by the day. And then, so it's using the wind and solar when it can. It's also using some existing hydro that it had lying around. And then in the end, it's using the natural gas. So it has to fire up the natural gas a lot to meet the peak demand. Okay, so let's look at the, policy, uh, the, the policies, but with storage now, and you'll see it's very different. So here now, we're trying to meet our, our demand, but we've allowed Nemo to build some storage. So you can see here, instead of um, having to use nearly as much natural gas, now it can rely on storage. So there's some time slices of the year when there's lots of solar or wind available, when it puts electricity into the battery or into the storage, and there's other times of the year when, when, when it can use that storage to help meet the peak demand. So overall, it ends up using the purple, the natural gas, much less than it did in the other scenarios. So that's a much more sort of realistic um, simulation of uh, what you might need to do to, to get to sort of much lower um, emissions pathways and to make use of storage and to make use of energy efficiency. Um, so let's see, so I think that's uh, about what I wanted to show you. Oh yes, now there's one, one other very quick thing. Um, what does that mean in terms of your emissions? So let's just look at one more chart, the greenhouse gases. By the way, I'm, I'm using the favorite charts feature in Leap here, so I'm quickly switching between different charts, just the, because time is so limited here. Okay, so here's the overall emissions in 2050 from these different scenarios. So you can see the baseline scenario had much higher emissions. When we went to the policy scenario, we dramatically reduced those emissions in part because we were doing lots of electrification and lots of energy efficiency. So there's no gasoline vehicles anymore. You know, they've been replaced by electric vehicles in this orange bar. Um, but then the policies with storage let you go even lower in part because you're making use of the storage, you don't have to dispatch the natural gas as much to meet your peak demand. So you're getting rid of the, the dispatch of the dirtiest plants. So it helps you squeeze the emissions down even further. And then the emission constraints scenario is like the policies with storage scenario, but it's just squeezing even further. So it's making even greater use of storage and wind and solar in order to meet the overall demand. So there you have it. That's a quick demonstration of how you can use three of Leap's new features, uh, the flexible time slicing, the demand side load shapes, and the NEMO optimization framework to examine policies for a transition to low greenhouse gas emissions. Um, I should say that this demonstration data set, this fictitious demonstration data set, will make that available and distribute it along with Leap 2020. So you can all play around with this data set yourselves.